Be the storm where you are. Use the resources that you have. Work with the people that are interested in working with you. Get the job done that you can get done today. Worry about tomorrow what you can't get done right now. Because you have, I'm sure there's a billion things that you can't do right now that if you use your resources right now, you can do. Yeah, focus on what you can do. So very excited to have Keith here uh, to dive into a very timely and important conversation. Probably relates very much to how we even got here. So let's dive right in. Keith, tell us a little bit more. Bring us back to where haptic designing and industrial design passion all started. Yeah, so where it started? That's a good question. Thank you. It started Carl Lefkin for me, really. I was in my third degree program. I was getting a master's degree in industrial design at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. And I spent my thesis trying to figure out how to teach movement learning digitally without a teacher being present all the time. And so I got into the world of haptics essentially because I was trying to build a suit that would allow a person to download Kung Fu and the suit would teach you using vibration. And so to your point, bring us now back to your kind of like personal chapter. Can't wait to see the Ninja uh, clothes design and when you have it out. Of course, fans, as I follow, they'll learn more. But there was a point you probably thought about, this translates to this whole problem of accessibility gap. Do you remember where that was, when that was, what was going on? How did you have that aha moment? Yes, that really showed up for me. So I worked on my thesis trying to build a Kung Fu suit and realizing that, well, a lot of the pieces are here already. They just aren't together in a way that would make them all make sense. And of course, some of the technologies need to be further developed. And so what I started to look at when I was graduating was, is like, I want to work in the space. I'm really excited about it. So when I graduated, I set out to create a company that was going to build the Kung Fu suit. Along the way, I ran into my co-founders, Tevin and Yang. And Yang was a classmate of mine. I worked on a project with Yang and then Kevin and I had worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art together as uh, fellows and their media lab program uh, back in the day. And so we were like, we had relationships independently with each other and they reached out to me and was like, Hey, we're going to create a half this company. You did have this for a whole year. Like you want to just do something together. And I was like, I was actually going to create a half this company on my own. So it was like, it'd be great to have company. And so we jumped in it together and that was like the origination and the start of WearWorks. That's really powerful. Tell me a little bit more, the product in itself, for those who have not heard or are familiar with how it works. Yes. WearWorks is a haptic navigation company. And the first product we built was a band called Wait, And it was paired with an app called Haptic Nav that's available for free in the app store for anyone to download. So the way it worked is you connected the app to the band and you would type in or say where you want to go, like Google Maps, and then you would be gently guided to your destination using only vibrations without the need for any visual or audio feed. And back in 2017, we used this technology to help the first person who was blind run the New York City Marathon without needing a sighted running guide. Keith, where can we see you in the next five, 10 years? Where would you like to be in the future? So one thing I'd like to do is haptic education is a really important mantle that I've taken up lately. It was really interesting. I, I realized at my time when I was in day-to-day -day operations at WearWorks that if we were wildly successful, I would have nowhere to go to hire haptic designers. I'm, I'm exaggerating. There are places to go. They just all would have PhDs and probably cost me $140,000, $150,000 a year. And so when we look at research effectiveness, and, and also to, to be really clear, most of the people who get a degree in haptics, they have a degree in human-computer interaction. Haptics is a part of that bigger space. So I'm not sure if there is a, you go when you study only haptics and you walk out with a degree in haptics the same way you can go and study graphic design and only walk out with a degree in graphic design. You can go and study trumpet and only walk out with a degree in trumpet, not even music. That's how specific we get with sound. You can focus on one part of sound and have a four-year degree experience in it. I would love to build a four-year degree undergraduate program for haptic design and haptic education. 